Yeah, now. They're live, live, like. Uh, we're streaming. We're live right now. Oh, they can see us. Oh shit. Let me see. I didn't get a notification. Uh, I did have. Yeah. Got one person. I got. Oh fuck. We're ready. Oh yeah, YouTube now live. I got a YouTube notification. I haven't got a Facebook notification. Oh yeah, there it is. I see the picture. Ooh, I like that. I don't think they can hear us. Oh shit! <laughs> the delay. <laughs> wow, it sounds good too. Not bad at all. My goodness. Yeah, I had a commercial I wanted to play. Figuring out new software. Can you hear me? Oh, you want to play the commercial? We can play the commercial. Go to the commercial now. And then, because I ain't even got a water yet, so we can't even. So we're gonna pretend you didn't see us now. Perfect. Pretend you didn't see us. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to get my water. You guys can talk. Right. You want water? Yeah, one more water. Please. Why can they only hear me? Because the mic's aimed at you. Mike's not aimed at me. I could plug in a mic right now. Oh, they can't hear you very well. They can't hear us. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. That's understood. All right, so, yeah. All right, this is the new, this is how it's going to be. Okay, so now. Just, now we don't know. We, Go ahead, play the commercial, Brian. What's up, guys? Lucas, the prom kid now, here to promote the Wicked Muay Thai shorts because I do kick 23% harder in these shorts. What I'm going to do is the regular old leg kick, right? So, boom. But that was weak. That was just a, that was just a show. Watch, so. Yeah, um, guys, get your Wicked Muay Thai shorts today and be sure to follow and watch Cage Titans on Instagram too, because you know, that I fight for them. They're pretty cool. Awesome. All right, there we go. I guess this day, this episode of Table Titans is exclusively brought to you by Wicked Muay Thai. Uh, I, I'm a fan of their shorts. I've got a few pairs myself. I bought a few personally off of Josh Showbiz Hagloff. It's his own self-made company. Did you guys uh, get the commercial? Yeah, I got the commercial. It's I missed great. it. I had never seen it yet. And you got oh, the man. prom kid kicking people like he's Fabrizio he Verdun, knocking people over. But yeah, no, it was a that was saw a commercial for for Wicked Muay Thai. I'm a huge fan of their shorts, so I'm down with that being an official sponsor of Table Titans, no doubt. Lucas Rens, awesome. <clears throat> all right, yeah, cool. He rocked the shorts on the fight night. A bunch of fighters did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, All the exclusive Muay Thai shorts that were made, the red and the blue ones that yeah. people were wearing throughout the night, all made by Wicked Muay Thai. Josh had a little booth set up with. All these different Muay Thai shorts. You can check out their website for a wide selection of durable and just really high quality Muay Thai shorts that are going to last a long time. So go ahead and check out Wicked Muay Thai. Um, yeah, yeah, man. So do we cheers? Yeah, we just I just witnessed our first ever Table Titans commercial that we played. So just taking a second. Cheers. cheers, everybody. We've only got a few short weeks before fight night. Cage Titans 51 right around the corner. And tonight we're also finagling with some new equipment and trying to get a new call-in system going with video calling. Video calling. So we're gonna have a little. Are we ready for that, or here. we're gonna wait a couple? Sure. All right. So why don't we? Yeah. So he's gonna set us up. So basically, we're uh, we're 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 we've said it so many times. Like this this whole setup, we started probably six seven years ago in the back of this this room. We used to record and then just go put it on YouTube after we edited. it. So, like, we've always evolved and we're always trying, like, new stuff. And we bring it to you live. Like, we don't mess around. Like, we've this, always this said is, this. They, they so, we're going to. been unscripted. <laughs> yeah. We have no plans. We have no expectations. We just turn the camera on and start shooting So, shit. today we have a new streaming software and we have a new system of having guests FaceTime in. So the, the new piece, like last week, it was a lot of great feedback when we did the awards and people would call in and then we just kind of did it like old school, like holding the phone up to the microphone. So it, we were like, listen, there's got to be a better streaming software so we could FaceTime people in. 
And uh, I think we got it. Brian and, and Brian's done some homework and Nick's done some homework and, and, and they kind of collaborated a little bit on this. My one thing right now that I'm, I'm curious about is how we're going to hear them. All right. So we'll be able to hear. Oh, so you could hear the commercial from here. Okay, cool. All right. Gotcha. All right. So I guess we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see if it works. And, uh, if all else goes well, we're going to have Atham Apofu, who's down in Alabama, Alabama, trained in SBG. Um, he's coming up to fight for the Cage Titans title uh, against Andrew Valdina on February 5th. A title that Arthur once held. He is the former bantamweight champion. Yes. He lost it to Jeff Choi, who has since gone Sorry, pro. Right. Good. Who has, who has since I gone need pro. to have something. I'll, I won't move it again. How about that? I really need that space back. Oh, all right. Oh, move hold on, hold on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> there we but go. anyways, Arthur Mappo from making the trip up since he's moved down to Alabama. He's making the trip back up to reclaim the gold that was once his and Andrew yeah. Valdina, who was like the Shawshank Redemption of 2021 awards, nominated for everything. He won, he nominated didn't, for knockout, yeah, fight. Didn't end up winning fighter. anything, but he still had a remarkable year, one of, a year for the record books nonetheless, yeah. and he is a, a perfect opponent for the vacant 135-pound title. I love this matchup. Yeah. I'm a fan of both of them as fighters, and you know that this title has gone been in the hands of some remarkable legends of the New England fight game. And this Manny Bermudez, Chris Martino, uh, you know the the list the, goes the, on. The, the list goes on. It Jeff is Joy, so many. Um, but yeah, so uh, in addition, he during COVID, I believe he went down to Alabama and started training the SPG down there, an affiliate, um, and he's actually bringing a teammate of his. On a crutch field, I think it's Anna or Anna. I'm not sure. They'll correct us. Um, she's a three fight veteran amateur. She's coming up. She, what was that? We got him. So uh, she's going to be taking on Aaron Johnson. So we have both of them here with us. And uh, let's see if it works. Is that Arthur and Anna. All right. So is it Anna or Anna? It's Anna. Anna. Perfect. Wow, we can hear him. That's exciting. Loud and clear. This is very exciting. Very nice. Exciting. Hold on. We're having a problem hearing you guys. Let's see if we can hear you. The volume is all the way up. They can't hear us at all? No, we, we can, can hear you. It's just very low. All right. Perfect. All right. We're going to have to talk louder then. I'm not sure. Is well, on like their a... side, they should probably have an airpiece if they don't hear us. Do you have an airpiece? Do you have speakers? Do we have... speakers? It's all right. We can ask them one at a time. So, Atha, um, what basically, um, what prompted this move down to Alabama to uh, train at SBG full time? Well, uh, COVID happened. The gyms are closed down for a little bit. So I had to go find another gym to pretty much kind of train at. Um, and then I knew these guys from the camp I've been to. And Ethan had been telling me, hey, man, this will be great. It would be awesome to move down here. And I ended up moving down here. And it's been the best decision I've made. I've met some really cool people like her. I met some really cool people like Ethan. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I've met some really cool people like Ethan. I've met some really cool, people, cool people like Danger Dave. I mean, it's a really tight knit family here. I train with pretty much killers every day. Uh, we got Eric Anders here, Wal Harris. So we got some big names here too, especially. But for sure, this was definitely one of the greatest moves I made for myself. Yeah, so um, how when, when did you actually finally go down there? And I know you've been fighting down there, but when did you officially make the move? Uh, March. March, yeah. March, yeah, that's why I think we came in March. Yeah. Around in March. That's nice. So you've had some fights while you were down there. What's it like, um, you know, compete? The, all your fights prior to this were with Cage Titans. So how, yeah. how, how's it been fighting down there? I mean, it's been cool. At first, you know, I, I definitely... I definitely missed my home because Cage Titans is my home and it always will be my home. But, you know, I definitely missed it, especially fighting there. But it was cool just to fight in a different venue because it gave me exposure, especially it was just something different. You know what I mean? I was, I was getting used to being uncomfortable, which is good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you bring a huge crowd. So when you're, when you're fighting here in Massachusetts, it, you know, you're the hometown hero. So you're hearing all <laughs> cheers. Is it, it's obviously been a little different. I'm assuming you're getting a little booed down there. Oh, dude. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, first, the commentator's talking trash, man. Jeez, Louise. Like, I'm like sitting here. I'm like, what fight are you watching, bro? 
<laughs> I'll try my best not to talk any trash in this fight. I'm a fan of both of you guys. And I have a question. Did you guys make this fight at the after party at the last Cage Titans 50? Because you were both present. And as I was on the way out, you guys were saying, this is the next fight. This is the next fight right after Cage Titans 50. And uh, you have you guys have any history back training together? No, I didn't know him. I mean, he trains with some of my former teammates, uh, Tyler Menard, uh, Joe Poirier. I mean, yeah, he trains with my former teammates. It's kind of it. Jeff Joy, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure who else he has trained with, but I know my former teammates have trained with him too. Trained, trained with him. Well, Alta has been talking to me for a little while, you know, about trying to get back up here. We're going to try in August, then November. Um, so when he was up here, we kind of knew that this was something that was in the works. And I'm assuming when you saw Valdino win in the fashion that he did, you kind of oh, knew what time it was. <laughs> he knew what time it was. Yeah, <laughs> time I, I was, you both seemed excited of the matchup the day of Cage Titans 50, right at the after party. I'm so stoked that it came to fruition. I got to give, I think, Jeff Joy a little credit. He was uh, he was nudging a lot of people to uh, to get this fight going. I know a former opponent of yours and a friend of yours, and I know he trains with Valdina as well. So uh, got a shout out to Jeff Joy for making this fight happen. But you're hungry. You want that belt back, and you're traveling many miles to do so. Super stoked for it. And you're bringing a teammate along, Anna Crutchfield. Welcome to table titans calling in and uh it's got to be one heck of an experience that you're looking forward to making the trip up what I'm can excited. you warn her about you know you fought at plymouth plenty of times before arthur what can you warn her about for the for the trip upcoming and what are you most looking forward to i mean Anna? you get so excited you get too excited that you're just so into it but <laughs> i mean the thing with anna is a lot of people don't know is she's like like how we've talked about certain people that are dark horses is one she's one of those people so i'm excited for up north to see what she can do but go ahead anna, uh, that's all you <laughs> let's go uh, anna, anna you, you've been the quiet one so you know the, the floor is yours um what got you started in mma and what can these fans expect from you so i actually i started boxing when i was 12 years old um i have an extensive background there uh then I transitioned into the kickboxing world. I trained under Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in South Carolina for about 10 years. And then um, this past year in March, I kind of made the jump the same as Arthur. I made the jump to SBG Alabama. I moved to Alabama and really started rounding out my game. Um, I obviously had an extensive background in striking. And then since I've been here, it's been more so just making me a full, complete martial artist, completing my ground game, getting my jujitsu and my wrestling up. All right, man. I'm excited. So you got some hands on you. Yeah, and you've taken a few fights. You fought back in 2016, if my memory serves me correct, and you kind of took some years off in between. Uh, and then you finally got some momentum in 2021, picking up your first MMA win. Congratulations on that. But what was the time off in between like for you to prepare you for this next stage? Yeah, so um, I really – I just – I. I didn't take the full aspect of the game. Um, I didn't take it all into aspect uh, there. So I was really just training striking. I was training kickboxing and boxing, and I took two MMA fights. So I took my first one right when I turned 18. Um, the camp I was at, they were kind of just like, all right, you're 18 now, so go fight. <laughs> and um, uh, that was the approach we took with it. it was obviously wrong because I went in my first fight back in 2016. I was submitted second round due to guillotine. And then I came back in 2018, really didn't change up my game plan at all. It was kind of just the same thing, just changed striking. So in 2018, I kind of had the same result. I lost the decision when it came to just the wrestling side. I spent nine minutes with my back on the cage. Um, so, yeah, really just moving here has been the big difference. How, how does it feel like to be able – have you traveled before for a fight, um, you know, with a teammate or without it? Have you even traveled for fights before? Yeah, for sure. I've actually, uh, I mean, with boxing and kickboxing, that's what I did my entire life. So I've competed internationally. I've competed in Bosnia and in Italy. Um, I've traveled all over across the country for fights, uh, just not in the MMA world yet. So, Well, man, we're excited. You know, um, women fights always bring it, you know, and, and, it's, and it's funny. I say this all the time. You know, I've been doing this for 11 years with Cage Titans. And no matter how many fights we have on the card, Every show I get asked, how many girl fights? How many women fights? How many women fights? <laughs> and, and, and the fans, 
you know, truly do enjoy it. I know your opponent, Erin Johnson. Um, this is her first fight with Cage Signs as well, but it's her, uh, you know, she's somebody who has um, said difficulty finding fights. Difficulty finding fights. So when when Arthur yeah. mentioned that about you, it just seemed like you guys would be the perfect fit. What do you know about her, and what do you, what do you expect to see from her? Um, I don't really know a ton about her. I know she has a little bit of wrestling experience. Uh, she's a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. Uh, I believe she has one Muay Thai fight. Uh, I think she has another one scheduled like coming up soon, some striking. Uh, so obviously I have, I know I have a huge advantage on the feet. So I look for her to try to take me down. As soon as I touch her, she's either one going to fall or she will two panic wrestle. So I'm uh, obviously prepared for that and ready to deal with whatever she throws at me. Uh, I, I mean, it's fair to say, you, you know, she getting that Muay Thai fight for her. I'm assuming, you know, knowing your history, she's gonna she's gonna need to get, you know, uh, spruce up her striking a little bit because I'm assuming you're gonna be wanting this stand and stand and trade from what I hear from you. Uh, I'm just stoked because, like we said, 2021, we had I think one women fight the entirety of all the fights that we put together. So kicking it off with a highly really highly anticipated amateur fight. I can't wait for you to make the trip up and uh, bring Arthur with you because he's he's making his long awaited return. Uh, I'm so excited that, for you, Arthur, because exactly. it's been a long time. You know, you were scheduled to fight for us right before COVID hit. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, th I think back then you, you were at my house like every week getting more tickets from yeah, me. It was. <laughs> it was insane. Every week you'd be like, I'm getting more tickets. You show up at my front door. And, uh, you know, you bring a crowd, and I know people that you haven't been able to see much of because you've been down in Alabama. I'm sure they're pretty stoked to see you fight uh, back home. What was that? Say that again. I'm sorry. Can you I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you, obviously you bring such a big crowd. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're really stoked to see you finally getting the fight back home. Because oh, I know everybody's that been day, asking me. <laughs> he asked me for tickets, and then two days later, he's like, never mind, I need more. And uh, he doesn't even live here anymore. <laughs> Actually, I do need more still, though. <laughs> uh, and, and, and your opponent, Andrew Valdina, he brings a crowd and a half as well. What is the message that you have for all of your fans that are going to be attending this fight and all of his fans? That are um, just get ready for a show to get put on. I mean, this is going to be probably fight of the year. It's been a while since I've been at Cage Titans, and I'm glad to just come back home. I'm going to feel great being in there because that was where I started. That's where you guys have started me from the beginning. So, yeah, it's going to be awesome just to come back home and just to fight back in there. There's a different feel. There's no other feel like Cage Titans. I fought at all these other promotions. They don't bring with the energy. There's a certain energy when you're in there. You're like, all right, we're doing this. It hits a little different. So you have a teammate, not only Anna, but uh, Anna, I'm sorry, a uh, teammate up here that's fighting Kevin. He's also on this card. I don't know if you knew that from SBG up here. What? Who is it? Kevin. Kevin up here. Who's fighting? Your, uh, oh, Kevin. Kevin. Oh, Kevin Fung. Yeah, he's doing a uh, Muay Thai fight. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't know that. Um, Yeah. I'm excited for him yeah. to get in there, too. I mean, I haven't seen him in a while. The last time I talked to him, he did tell me he had something coming up. I'm excited for him to get back in there. Yeah, he's uh he's uh doing a Muay Thai fight. Um, he's taking on Scott Sugar Cookie Drayton from Citadel. Okay, Sugar Cookie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it's gonna be a fun little fight. Uh, so you'll see a teammate of yours from back up here at SBG East. So SBG is gonna be well represented. Yeah, it is. We're gonna have the hitters out tonight that night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I don't I don't really have many more questions. I'm glad that we get to. Bring you back in front of the fans. You making a new T-shirt? Yeah, yeah, I'm making new shirts, of course. I got what, you. What's I got the design? you. Give huh? us a sneak peek. What's the design? All right, I'll give you guys a sneak peek. It's for the people. <laughs> for the fans. <laughs> Both of them for the fans. Both of them with shirts and hooked me up with shirts, and I'm torn. Oh, he's got it. Oh, is he pulling up on his camera? Sorry oh, about okay. the phone. You know, it's seen a lot of life. <laughs> Zoom in a little bit on it. I can see it. Yeah. All right. Is that good? All right. I dig it. I love okay. it. Nice. No, I'm, I'm really a big Dragon Ball Z fan, so I think we just had to go with that. Anna, you got any swag? I do not have any apparel yet, but it looks like I need to have Arthur help me with these designing. 
You got you got to step up your game. He'll yeah, work with you in the gym and then outside the gym as well. No, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be there back home. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We cannot wait to see you in a couple weeks. And I don't know where they sell winter coats in Alabama, but find one I would recommend. Yes. Bring it with you. It's going to be cold. I keep telling them how cold is there. They think it's a joke. <laughs> Anna, where did you say you were from originally? I'm from South Carolina. All right. So just to give you an idea, tomorrow they already canceled school in Boston because of the, the temperature is going to be so cold. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard of, you ever heard so of school being down. canceled because of cold? Yeah. No. No, <laughs> this weather here, it's like 60, and I'm like, all right, it's getting chilly here now. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm moving down south. Well, right now it's 24 degrees. Tomorrow it's going to be 14. So uh, I don't even have a jacket you can wear in that weather. <laughs> no, that green jacket you came in the other it's like day. A sweat. It's still a hoodie, though. It's thin. It's very thin. All right, there, there, there. <laughs> Well, Arthur, you better help your girl out and get her some winter clothes. <laughs> All right. I got my homie. All right. It was good uh, to see you guys. Thank you. And yeah, before likewise. you leave, do you have anybody you want to thank? Any sponsors or anything that you are uh, or how they can find you on social media? Um, I want to thank uh, Perona and Construction, SBG Alabama, SBG East Coast, all my sponsors, my family, my parents, my teammates. And I'm just excited to fight in front of you guys again. And let's make this a thing, Mike. Let's make this a thing. Arthur, you know you have a home whenever you are ready to come back. We've been talking ever since you moved down there. So yes, sir. These title, fights. These title fights. You know you have it. And Anna, we, we're excited to welcome you into our Cage Titans family. Anybody you want to thank or do you uh, have any social media where everybody can follow you? Yeah, for sure. Of course, everybody can follow me. My um, Instagram is acrutch18. Follow me on there. Same thing on Twitter. And, of course, Anna Crutchville on Facebook. But, of course, I'd like to thank Arthur and Cage Titans for bringing me on here. Uh, my team here at SVG Alabama, and then uh, Iridium Sports and Guy Dama. You guys have been awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much, uh, and have a great night, and we'll see you in a few, week, few weeks. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. I like this new technology. Yeah. That worked I out like pretty it. damn well. Yeah, go back to the commercial. Let's show it again. You yeah, can't have enough yeah, of the gotta, prom kit. Can't, and I, that's a pretty badass What's murder. up, guys? Lucas, the prom kid now, here to promote the Wicked Muay Thai shorts because I do kick 23% harder in these shorts. What I'm gonna do is the regular old leg kick, right? So, boom. But that was weak. That was just a, that was just a show. The watch, so. Yeah, um. Guys, get your Wicked Muay Thai shorts today and be sure to follow and watch Cage Titans on Instagram too because you know that I fight for them they're pretty cool awesome So we should probably throw a disclaimer that is a joke commercial well, Lucas did the commercial kind of on his own Instagram story. The price, that's real. The price, the phone number, it's all that stuff. It's just for show, um, just as a joke. Um, well, I will say. It's pretty impressive. We already got an 800, an 800 number. Mean, for the first thing Andy said, he goes, they have an 800, 800 number. number already. Like, uh, <laughs> they're running this at like 3 a.m. on, on Lifetime or something. <laughs> um, ah. Uh, so uh, I got I to gotta make sure I mention, for the real pricing, I believe their shorts are $30 across the board. Um, you know, they're, they're $30 across the board. The custom ones, if you want to make your own custom ones, they're a little bit more expensive. But any of their stock designs, I'm pretty sure. Josh Hagloff's whole premise of his company was to get affordable Muay Thai shorts that, that last, that and last. durable. Yes. And, uh, you know, as fighters are, don't have a ton of dough, you know, spending sixty, seventy dollars on Muay Thai shorts just wasn't in the cards. So, so these, um, these things are a short bet. A short so bet the three bet. payments are nine ninety nineteen nine ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> um, and hey, Mike, I commented on how nice your smile is. Take me for a date. I was wondering if that was a hint at something, uh, Cam. So uh, yeah, as the as the kids nowadays slide into my DMs and we can see where we can go out. Uh, <laughs> I would love to take you out on a date, that handsome uh, boy you are. Um, and actually, 
we have something coming up soon for you, Cam. Bring lots. Um, I don't know if we should bring it out now. Do we want to bring it out now? I wonder if I can send it to him. So, so Cam, you know, you know how you have that beautiful picture on top of the cage. Well, I think I had to one up you, and I sent this. Yeah, I sent it to the marketing team because I want them to. Uh, I want them to see. I I have a little who did it better. I think we're going to be posting this in the couple next couple oh, of days. Um, let's see if Brian can pull it up. All right, we're going to keep talking and distracting. But Cam, if you're ready for a date, like I said, slide into those DMs. I'm definitely digging this uh, technology. Um, it's it's uh, it's pretty cool to be able to see them and hear them. So Cam, this one's for you. I see you on the cage, and I one up you myself on the cage and uh the funny part about this picture that they're about to show it was actually at memorial hall as well and it's almost a de uh it's almost identical in the spot at memorial hall that you were when was this though <laughs> this was like 13 years earlier so still, cam you were probably uh <laughs> still, still in high school he's like a freshman in high school yeah so there you go cam uh i saw this picture pop up in my memories and i was like guys you got to get this and you got to throw it up. Um, I think this was after my pro debut. This is because I keep making bad jokes lately. Yeah, I had to, you know, I, I'm a little heavier Sorry. than my 145 pound <laughs> fight days. But there's my impression of you. Uh, who did it better, Cam, me or you? Uh, so there you go. Oh, it's pretty, pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's something about yeah. the building. Plymouth Memorial Hall. You got to jump Dude. on top of the cage when you win. That's when what... you, I'm telling you, when you fight there, it's like the Coliseum. You look really up, is. people all around you. Oh, the parties. There's people all around you, and it's just like you feed off that energy. I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. I mean, uh, I was there. I was obviously screaming. I had a little hair on the head back then, too. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the party's here. Uh, the party, man, I'm, I'm excited and I'm stoked for your fight. Um, now that we got this call-in technology, I think we're going to have to get the party in Lionel set up for next week, maybe. Uh, don't I take your it. shine. I won't take your shine. Sorry. Uh, so do we have Valdina and Aaron ready yet, or do we want to? Valdina should be ready soon. I think they're calling in separate. All right, calling in separate. Sure. So and, uh, we're going to have Andrew first. All right, tell us whenever we're ready. You should be joining okay. next. So basically, so for you guys, this this new technology, not new technology, new technology to us, new to you, I should say. Really implement is Is all time. we have to do is send you a link. You open the link, and you're automatically brought into our broadcast. Um, you know, we've tried Zoom calls and Facebook Messenger calls and things and, like and, that. And, and the juice hasn't been worth the squeeze at and, times. And it's, it's never just, it's worked. Grainy. It hasn't. It's it's been Hard. difficult. It drops off. You need the right connections. You end up going four or five minutes too late. You lose the record. It's, yeah. It's been a nightmare left, right, and but center, So from the sounds of this, it looks pretty good. Um, it's pretty user friendly. Um, and you're going live on multiple platforms. And we're well. live on Twitch. YouTube and, and Facebook. Three. So, so we did Twitch. Yeah. We have a Twitch now. We made Twitch oh. like four or five days ago. Yeah, yeah we got a Twitch now. I, I got. I hate to give it to him because he's in the comments. I got to give credit to uh, Zach Cyril. Zach Cyril signed us up for a Twitch like a year, two oh, years yeah. ago, and then we never used it. And then we started kicking around the idea. So we're a little late to the game, but kudos to you, Zach. You were the first one to throw the Twitch idea. But our Twitch is We Are Cage Titans. Um, so we got Valdina. Before we get to Valdina on that Twitch thought, any of our fighters or fans who are into gaming that would like to do an episode on our Twitch, um, we would love to bring oh, yeah. in some talent. Uh, we know there's a bunch of gamers out there. So if you want to be able to collab and hop on our Twitch and, and do something, we're uh, kind of looking to pop our cherry in the Twitch game. So uh, we'd love to have you there. Um, Hi, Andy, Becca Harris. What's going on? Um, and then also before we jump to Valdina, if anybody does want to call in whenever we're on air, you can send a DM to Brian Garrison. He'll screen you and make sure that we'll want to bring you in. Uh, that comment's probably more for Zach Cyril because uh, he would probably call in every damn show. But if you have something to say um, and you want to call in, you can DM Brian. And if, if, if we have time for you, we can bring you in. It is FaceTime, which will be cool. So without further ado, we got the gladiator, Andrew Valdina. Uh, we talked to his opponent, Othamo Pofu, earlier. 
and Andrew is fighting for that vacant title against Atama Pofu. What's going on, Valdina? What's going on, guys? Great, great. Oh, you got the Mac Jones shirt. Unfortunately. Oh, he's choppy. Hold on, he's a little oh, choppy. How's your uh, service there, buddy? Hold on, let me let's go on. the Wi-Fi. See if you can get on some Wi-Fi. <laughs> sounds like Stephen Hawking with a stutter right now. How are we doing? Is he here? I think he's trying to fix it. He is babyface. Where's that little like conquistador uh, goatee and mustache? Is he still there? All right. Oh no. Valdin is like calling in the in his basement. He needs to up his. Oh, is he there? Hey. There we go. I like the Mac Jones. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, I like the Mac Jones, and I was just complimenting your baby face because uh, the controller pointed it out. Where's the conquistador mustache and uh, goatee? Hey, but... Not here again. Valdina, you're probably in the worst area for your cell reception. Is there any other better service area you can get to? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's Hold let up. Brian see if he can get him. Oh, wait, wait. It looks like he's in the basement. Yeah. He's 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 in the uh, tornado shelter. Yeah. Ever no, seen don't. one guy, I'm one not, glass? Not, Valdina's in a cabin. Yes, I got a couch to watch with friends. I don't know what one glass, one jar is. Don't ask. Do you I, know I, that? It, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna inquire. It sounds like. Yeah, it doesn't sound. Good. <laughs> doesn't no. sound good at all. No, no. I don't know what they're, know what they're into in Maine, but I'm nah. <laughs> so. Uh, this is just like the MMA hour now. Google it, Mike. No, I'm not Googling it. <laughs> anything that you're, anything that you're, uh, if Zach you're putting your word on to Google it, something, no. don't do it. You'll get but, a knock on your so door. before we bring Valdina back, uh, you know, Valdina, like you mentioned, nominated for knockout of the year, fight of the year, fighter of the year. Yeah, all, um, all of them. He had a tremendous year, went 2-0, two, oh, two different weight classes, had, had a great fight against Josh Medeiros, went the distance, showed a full MMA arsenal, showed he had the gas tank to go three full rounds and then in his win over randy francis he took the fight uh up a weight class looked incredible <laughs> in the striking department scored the second round knockout uh got the nomination for the knockout of the year had one of the better years of all the amateurs that fought this year fought twice won twice and yeah. just you know complete it's great surge in his career john oh, yeah. valdina said he's hustling he's two seconds john i i wonder if john's his dad john i gotta i gotta give credit john I'm a father of five. I say this all the time. If you've watched the show, you know. If you are his dad, man, I got to give you kudos. He went on his soapbox when we announced the awards and was like, how do you not pick Andrew Valdina for this award? And he, he like, kind of gave us a lashing why we didn't pick him. Uh, it is his dad. Um, and we had we, – we, we let it vote with the fans, and we did have a panel. Uh <laughs> So as a dad, I love that you were campaigning. You yeah. campaign on all of our posts. Um, it's so amazing to see that type of support uh, from a father to a son, you know. And again, it hits home with me because I'm a father of four boys. I got one daughter. Um, so, you know, it, it's cool to see you guys. All the, all the my my daughter could probably, probably could. beat everybody <laughs> up. Uh, so, yeah, man, it, it, it was cool to see. But I almost was like – I was so tempted to direct message John when he went on it. I was like, listen, here's the deal. I mean, the truth be told, Valdina was 2-0. and The only other fighter in that category that was 2-0 and was Jack, Jack Condon. Condon. Jack got two finishes and won a title. So it was that, that was just probably the determining factor. Yeah, tip the, um, tip the scales. Tip the scales a little bit. Hard to argue off the Walsh and Kasky fight. That, that fight, when it happened, we were like, that was the fighter of the ever. And then the knockout, that was a toss-up category. Those were so insane. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact – one person said that Valdina probably should have won because he went up a weight class for that knockout. <laughs> Unfortunately, when the voting's going out there, that's kind of like one of those pieces that doesn't yeah. kind of get on the ballot. Uh, he's back. Perfect. Let's go, yeah, A.V. Like does he have headphones in right now? Or? 
No, I can't see. Oh, it's is he still in his log cabin? I, don't know I am in a log cabin. Uh, <laughs> you're in a log cabin. You're training like Yuri Prohaska or something out in the woods. So, so Val, Valdina, um, what was it like to have such a great year last year to kind of position yourself uh, coming out of COVID to now win two fights and put yourself in title contention? It's all frozen again. Damn. No, oh, because the author and the other people went perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude, he's got the worst connection. Great freeze frame. It is a good – dude, that's a nice shirt. Yeah. And he tall. looks so different. Yeah. There we go. What did he say? No, we're ignoring it. All right. Is he there? Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear me, man. Oh, we can hear you now. We can hear you. Does this work? Yeah. Did your dad help you? No, he didn't help me. He doesn't know technology for the back of his hand. It's, it's ridiculous. Oh, that's awesome. We can hear you. So coming out of COVID, what was it like for you to come out of COVID and, and you know, and, and, and kind of come out and get two big wins and put yourself into a position for this title fight? Um, it, it was obviously just a great year I had. Um, I had some other things going on in my life that I thought I was going through, but it kind of didn't really plan out the way I wanted it to. Um, and I didn't even know if I was going to go back. To, to fighting at least this soon in my life and um i did and i was like at first i was like you know what let's just take one more fight i'm getting the itch like it's what i love to do let's do it i did end up being a fight of the year contender i freaking loved it It was unreal uh good shit Medeiros, by the way good great kid and then um i was like all right let's keep this ball rolling so then i went with uh francis tough motherfucker he is he's he's a tough dude and got a, a huge knockout that I called. So last year was a great, great year. I loved it. And that's just kind of like the – it's almost like the ignition for, like, what's to come in 2022. It really is. I have so much fuel in me right now to go. And 2022 is literally going to be my biggest year I've ever had. It's, it's going to be sick. So you became Mystic Valdina. You called the second-round knockout. And on that note, you're saying that you're going to fight five times in, in 2022. Five, five or six times, yeah. Nice. Um, I, I I can't believe like you called that fight. Like I'm, I I keep thinking to myself, like we interviewed you before, we talked, and you called it. I mean, like, did, was that a vision or like did did you? What gave you that premonition that you were going to finish the fight that way? Well, what I did, I just took my crystal orb and I looked at it and rubbed it a little. No, listen, this is what I did. <laughs> I uh, I kind of. I, I, I watch, I study all my opponents. I really do. I, I'm studying up and down Arthur Mapofu's fights. Um, like it's nobody's business. And I think he's doing the same if he's smart. Um, but with Randy Francis, um, you know, before I go any further, I always say this, like he actually is a good dude. So whatever I'm about to say, it's nothing personal. But having said that, I watched all of his fights and just a tendency that I saw was he really just lifts that chin up like obviously honestly right off the bat and every time he throws that chin so high and as the rounds progress that chin was raising and raising in all of his fights and uh Connor Matthews he was he was commenting probably talking a little bit of smack to me friendly smack to me in the chat earlier me and him work every almost every single day together and he's getting me so accurate precise he's he's just making me like an unreal striker he really is um night and day from uh, a couple of years ago. And when I have that accuracy that Connors provided me with someone's chin that rises, I just knew it was going to be a, a concoction for a round two knockout. And um, I, I really did believe it. And I, I didn't bullshit about it. So, I mean, that's how I, that's how I saw it. His name is the one 35 pound champ. <laughs> so I guess we got to learn you, you're allowed to type in your own name and you put your name as the 135 pound champ. So you're already putting it out to existence. <laughs> I thought you guys get a kick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, I mean, it just seems like you're looking forward to a lot. You're already calling yourself the champ. You say you want to fight six times nah. coming into this year. You, 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 I'm sure that you're starting off with the title fight. So is a professional debut something you're looking for this year? But first and foremost, I don't want you to look past Arthur Mopofo. I'm really excited for this fight. I am a fan of both of you. I've called both of your fights 
coming up. Um, st stylistically, I'm so excited to tell the story of how this fight unfolds. I asked Arthur the same question because you both bring a crowd. What do you have to say to your fans that you're planning on bringing on the 5th? And what do you have to say to Arthur's fans that he's bringing? Um, yeah, like, like you said, first and foremost, I'm definitely not looking past Arthur Mapofu. Um, he's a he's a he's a pretty tough dude. He's got good striking from what I've seen. Um, not to bullshit, but I think my striking is better. Um, so once that's done, no, to the fans. That's what you ask. The fans, it's gonna be a fucking it's gonna be the loudest post Memorial Hall's ever been. I can tell you that, especially when we're kickstarting all the other title fights. This is going to be the first title fight of the night of four. And we're just going to have a huge crowd from Arthur, a huge crowd from, from me. It, it's going to be bananas. Everyone's going to be going crazy. Drinks will be thrown. I hope I get a beer thrown to me. and I'll fucking chug it down in the, in the, in the ring after I, yeah, I do my thing. But uh, it, it's going to be just bonkers. And I can't wait. No drinks being thrown. No drinks. I, I mean, don't want we can happen. pass you a drink in the cage like we did with Shane Doherty. We could possibly do that because that's a great segue. Thank you for that. Uh, Second Wind Brewery just texted me this morning. They are going, um, how, what do you say? They're going to brew tomorrow. They start, they're starting the process for the February 5th Cage Titans IPA. So they're starting oh, hell yes. the whole process of brewing tomorrow for the beer that we'll have on February 5th. So that's exciting. So if you do win the title, I will bring you a beer. Nobody, please throw beers to him in the cage. <laughs> throw them. No, it's good. Gonna... <laughs> Valdina, I gotta say, you know, when you have, you do have one of the most boisterous crowds, and like, whenever I think of like the loudest it's been or some of the chants, it it plays in my head. Valdina, Valdina. It's like perfect in how it chants. It it, it runs. It rings through there. It. it it sounds kind of nice. I gotta, I gotta admit, it's one of the best chants we've seen there. Yeah, I'm proud of my fans, man. They're awesome. My family, my friends, my supporters. It, it, they make it, they make it huge. They make it such a better experience for experience for me too. So it's awesome. So you like to give Connor a lot of shit, um, you know. But obviously, you have a lot of confidence. You have a lot of skill. You, you know, do you attribute a lot of that to your training partners being around guys like Joe Lozon and? And you know Connor Matthews and all the other studs that you train with. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm, I'm, I really am uh, blessed to be in the spot I am in New England. I'm training with the best of the best in New England at the best camp in New England. It's Lowe's on MMA just breeds killers. Um, you know, Connor Matthews. I really don't see any better striker or striking coach um, in the Northeast. And I got him hand in hand with me, so that's sweet. I got Tyler Menard. Um, he's basically my jiu-jitsu sensei right now. Joe Lozon has got expertise like no other. It, it's great. I'm, I'm really, really just fortunate to be where I am. And all the success, like I'm just a vessel for all of their knowledge. I really am. Everything that they teach me, luckily, like my biggest attribute I'd say is like I can really just listen, learn, and, um, and just display it when, I, when, I, when it comes down to it. And uh, it's all them. It really is. Yeah. So uh, my last question for you is going to be kind of more of a comical one. Uh, you have only Dan's Dan Walsh that's part of your gym, but uh, I've seen you on the Instagram stories uh, dancing up the women at the country bars. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are some good moves, though, weren't they? You look. You were looking all right, man. You were looking all right. I think the only Dan's might have. Uh, a run for his money in Andrew Valdina because uh, you were definitely getting down on the dance floor with uh, the moms out there at country night. The gladiators got moves. <laughs> I gave her a little twirl in the bath floor. It was sick. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, Andy, I, I got nothing else. I know we have your teammate, Aaron Johnson, coming on. Andy, you got anything for the gladiator? I mean, listen, I just did, they made this fight at the after party at Cage Titans 50. I figured it was going to happen. There was a little push from the fans. And, and you know, Valdina has always won the party afterwards. I'm stoked to see you at the after party after this fight, after all the business is taken care of between you and Arthur. Because I uh, just got so much respect for both of you. I'm stoked for this coveted bantamweight title that will no longer be vacant after February 5th. Couldn't think of two better people to be fighting for it. So, no, I'm just excited. And uh, I know both these guys work so hard. So, 
just overall training is going well and stoked to have you on this finally on to table titans and damn it this is another amateur title fight what all right my, my so last question let, what, yeah. what's the first thing you do with the belt if you win it arthur's already had the belt he's already had it he's coming to regain it so he's already had that that fun but you if the first time you win your amateur title what what's the first place you bring that belt um First place I'm bringing it is to have it on the motherfucking wharf, baby. No. <laughs> but after that, I'm going uh, just like a small little tiny, tiny, tiny tour. I'm bringing it to my hometown of Drake. It. Uh, that's where like most of my, uh, you know, my core friends were are from and stuff. So I'm going to bring it there real quick. And then um, I kind of just want to bring it right back to Lowe's and May and leave it there as a, just a reminder, you know, every day, look at that motherfucker and be like motivated every single day. Um, so that's what, that's all I'm going to do. Just a quick little thing. Nice. Well, uh, your, your dad, John, said you got to bring it to Florida, so maybe he's going to be taking you to Florida. Uh, I forgot. We're going – yeah, I don't know how I forgot this. After uh, after we get the belt, we're going to Florida uh, for two weeks, so I have. To, I guess I have to bring that as a carry-on. <laughs> Are we going to Disney? Is that what you're going to be screaming? <laughs> we're going to Disney. No, no, no. <laughs> awesome. Well, Valdina, thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys um, compete on February 5th. It's been a pleasure having you as part of the Cage Times family up until this point. Uh, we look forward to having you in this title fight and uh, look forward to having you. Maybe we'll see you for five or six more fights this year. Yeah, we will. Um, real right, quick, can I, give a, yeah. can I give a shout outs? Yeah, it was actually that. that you, the floor is yours. Shout outs. Give all your social media and all that stuff. Any sponsors too. Um, thank you. So I, so here's the thing. I have a, like a, like a boathouse in the back and that's where I've been staying, but that's where I left. I had to go run out here to get a better connection. But my huge list of sponsors that I just wrote is out there. So I have to kind of like brainstorm right now. I'm trying to remember. Um, but first and foremost, my Instagram is at Andrew Valdina. It's my full name. You'll see it right after it says the 135-pound champ. And then uh, so you just follow that. Um, some cringy stuff, some good stuff. Follow it up, though. Um, but my sponsors, let me just brainstorm. I got um, Pete the Job Guy, which is a radio broadcast i'm not even gonna go in i'm just gonna name them pete the job guy um marmelo construction brothers um which is a brand new one i just actually got this morning uh thanks to justin simmons um we got u.s golden pond out of manchester new hampshire uh party time rental it's my family's um party tent rental business that's out of drake at mass um uh what the fruit we got um Stupid Genius Studios, that's based out of Lowell, Mass. It's a, it's like a uh, rap recording studio with uh, three major artists. We got um, Invisaware. That's like one of my biggest ones, actually. That's like an emergency um, button you can press and hidden inside jewelry compartments, where if you press it, like emergency service will come like immediately. Really cool. Um, we have McNeil Landscaping out of Drake. Gothier Millwork out of Drake. Um, Into Action Recovery is a 12-step um, program to help people who are suffering from addiction. Um, that's, that's my family who owns that as well. That's on the very mass. Um, we also have – I'm definitely missing a couple, and I feel so bad about it. Um, you, you can – we can stall if you want to run and go grab your list. Um, oh, yeah, Kayla Frazier, uh graphic design. That's a good friend of mine. She does Unreal Graphic Design work. She did a, a lot of designs for me as well. Uh, actually, my T-shirts, which I still have a bunch of. If you guys want T-shirts, reach out to me on Instagram. It's um, You can just click the link in my bio and reach out to me there. Um, I already mentioned my dad's like, U.S. Golden Pond. I already mentioned U.S. Golden Pond. Um, <laughs> Shut uh, it, Dad. <laughs> and then um, I think I think that's all for that one. But thank you, I guys. You got him? Oh, it's all right. Way cool. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for calling in, Andrew, the gladiator Valdina. Look forward to his title fight against Arthur McPoke for coming up on February 5th. Thanks again for right. calling in, man. We'll see you around. Later. So did he say he lives in a boathouse? Was that what he said? He's living yes. in a boathouse. Is that what he said? Okay. Yeah, he's Oh, that's pretty cool. No yeah, wonder why he had no fucking service. He was in the cabin of a boat. So we're going to go right to Aaron. Right, so, we go. wow, look at that. We ran a little late, but we're going right to Aaron. So we have uh, Andrew Aldina's teammate, Aaron Johnson, uh, the war baby, who's on now. 
Earlier, we had her opponent, Anna Crutchfield, who's coming up at Othaba Pofu. So this is kind of like two teammates fighting two teammates. Yep. Same card. Kind of cool. So uh, let's see what Erin uh, has to say and bring her on in. There she Hi. is. Have a control <laughs> oh, she got the controller there with her. Go. She brought a, a special surprise guest with me. <laughs> oh, look at that handsome I'm fella. The dynamic <laughs> duel. Yes. What's, What's happening? I like, I got the, we see the Lakeville shirt, the Lowe's on. We got the Kill Beanie. So, Aaron, all the merch. It has been a long time coming. Oh my god! You know, we've been trying, trying to get you on a fight cover. Like ever now. <laughs> I know, I know. This girl She's causing you quite the headache, <laughs> dude. You have given me more sleepless nights. <laughs> I, honest to God, when somebody puts their name in for me with my fight, like with a cage sides card. I hate to disappoint. And Connor can speak. He's been with her for a while. There's nothing that hurts me more when people give me their name and they want to fight for cage sides and it doesn't happen. Um, I've added two cards in a day because we had so many people and I just didn't want to say no to. It's been so many sleepless nights trying to get Aaron to fight. Women fights and heavyweights are the worst damn fights to match. But we finally got her. Uh, <laughs> And even last time, we announced her fight for the last card, and the next morning, the, the very next day, it was scrapped. Honestly, uh, it feels like a jinx to even announce it at this point. I was like, no, oh, it's it's so, whatever is in the water, you <laughs> drink it. Nobody wants to fight either of you two. As I say, no one wants, no one wants to fight the controller or the war, baby. But Anna is coming up with her teammate to fight your teammate. You know, I, I, I got, we got strong feelings. She's competed a lot. Um, I, I have strong hopes for this fight. Um, how does it feel? It won't probably feel real until you get in the cage, but how does it feel to kind of be able to promote something for, for after such a long time out of the MMA world, I should say? Oh, it feels good to have a date that's pretty solid now and like I can rely on and to have tickets in my hand, like knowing it's really going to happen. Um, especially since she's coming up with Valdina's opponent, she's really going to show up. So like, it's just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It just feels so good. <laughs> I cannot wait to fight. I've been trying. I have couldn't find any MMA fights forever, so I switched over and I did a Muay Thai fight. And I have another one coming up right before this one. But uh, it feels good to finally do MMA. Like that's what I want to do. So it feels good to try and get back in there again. It's quite the jump from going to struggle to find fights to having two on the calendar consecutively. What's yeah. what's that like balancing between two sports and taking as much action as you can get? Uh, yeah. when you can. experience is experience so just trying to get in everywhere i can <laughs> look at uh zach cyril your little buddy throwing the wi-fi so good in connor's parents house <laughs> <laughs> yo how many sponsors does valdina have though now this went on for like for years <laughs> dude i i was gonna say the same thing <laughs> hey, he's going down a laundry list he's uh just and then he's, he actually had, he was in there for like three or four minutes going down the list. And he's like, I probably <laughs> forgot a few. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the list written down. <laughs> like, I thought I had a lot of sponsors. I thought I was doing good in that. But the point was, Valdina's blew me away. Oh Valdina's a hustler. But, oh, uh, you know, so you, I don't know if you got to watch the show about, you know, Anna talking about her experience. What do you know about her in like, um, or were you just learning as she was talking about it here earlier? Um, I looked up some of her stuff before. I don't like to look up my opponents too much before I fight them, but I did see she's got some really good striking going on, so this is going to be fun. Um, I've definitely improved my striking while I've been, you know, kind of behind closed doors these last couple of years, especially with quarantine and uh, COVID and gyms being closed. Like, I was working that whole time, so my striking, like, jumped up, and I just can't wait to show everybody that. Uh, I know she started around the same training around the same time that I did. I started at Lausanne when I was 11. She started uh, boxing when she was 12. Uh, but I've been also been doing jujitsu that whole time. So we'll see where that plays in during the fight. It's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and now uh, you got that secret net, uh, weapon next to you. Valdina was uh, complimenting Connor that he's the striking champ up here in, in the Northeast. So how's, how's it being able to work? so closely with Connor and working your striking? Uh, he is a huge part of my camp. Um, we work 
every day, twice a day. Um, we are always in the gym. And when we're not in our gym, we're in a different gym. So <laughs> we're just going everywhere, getting the best coaching we can. We go to uh, Hard Knocks for Jake Benini. He's definitely, like, the best striking coach in New England. And when I don't have him, I got Connor, who's, like, the second best. <laughs> um, and then we go to just – it's so awesome to have him all the time. Just to coach me. Too. Yeah, regiment, training center. Uh, go to Lakeville MMA all the time. He teaches there. It's just great to have all these people around me. Yeah, I see that. I see that uh, Connor's got you downstairs in the basement jumping rope, too, yeah. on the hall. Yeah, no days off. Or, you know, you know, no, no minutes any, off. Uh, COVID scares or anything. That's fine. We put mats in the basement. We're, we're going to keep training. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I got to share a funny story. Aris, every night I told you before, and I forget the guy's name, but after our last, uh, right before our last event, I got an Uber. And, you know, I'm getting the Uber and I'm starting talking about the, you know, the fights, obviously, because I was coming from Plymouth, coming up to Coops to get my car. And he's like, oh, do you know Aaron Johnson? <laughs> and he starts hounding me on the whole ride from Plymouth all the way up to Quincy about how I have to get her a fight. His friends <laughs> it was like a 40-minute ride from Plymouth. And I ended up giving him tickets, and he ended up coming to the fights. And uh, so make sure you tell your dad's friend you finally got a fight with Cage Titans. Because if I get in that guy's Uber again, I won't everybody. be able to look at him if I don't. You know? <laughs> My dad knows everybody. I think he's got another friend, um, Bob McCarthy. That you're friends with as well uh my dad knows whether i'm fighting or not before i do like he knows everybody it's kind of it's crazy yeah well i'm excited so uh you know this this girl like she kind of mentioned you know she knows she has that stand-up advantage in her mind she has a standard advantage what does she what does she call it uh desperation wrestling she huh. thinks that you wrestling. know what what do you what do you got to say about the i mean i don't think it was a dig but and I'm not trying to drum anything up, but what do you what do you have to say about that kind of breakdown of the fight from her? Um, there's not a lot of film on me that she can watch. There, I have two fights, and I think she's going to be really surprised at what I'm bringing to the table and how hard I've been training. And she's just delusional, panic wrestling. What the fuck is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, all right. Nice. You're part of this new generation that's been training literally half your life as you're making this transition into the MMA cage. What's the uh, what's the end goal? You're you're training closer with someone who obviously is right on the cusp of making it to the to the UFC. Who that's where what Connor's goals are. How do yours lie in relation to that? You going all the way with this? I am trying to take this as far as it'll go, um, but without it being a job. I do this because I love it. I'm a martial artist first and a fighter second. Um, but I'm definitely going to try to get to UFC. That's where I want to be. All starts on the 5th. Finally getting her some MMA fights around here. It's, I'm just I'm just stoked because I've been wanting to call one of her fights for a long time. <laughs> it's finally here. I had to go to Alabama to get it. But... Fingers yeah, crossed. We, we... Everything goes right. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I've I've so many. I, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm kind of... Well, one thing to yeah. add, this is gonna it's gonna be our twenty first birthday. Oh yeah, I'm fighting on my birthday. So. <laughs> oh your birthday is the same exact day. Yeah. Didn't, so, didn't Shane fight. Doherty do that fight on his no, 21st Shane birthday? No, Shane Doherty his birthday was like three days before the fight. So you will might all right. Well we did a shot with Shane Doherty. <laughs> so if you pull I mean, out if, this if somebody's point. gonna be drinking beers in the cage, it's it mean, should be me. It should be her, right? <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I'm so happy you shared that. <laughs> We will not be happy about that. I'm going to end up fighting Joe in the cage if that uh, happens. Don't tell Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that just adds such another level to this. Um, this I'm, I'm even more excited. Gift I ask for. You, what was that? Uh, this would be like the best birthday gift I could ask for. Finally getting a fight for Cage Titans. Another MMA fight. Like, can't get better than that. I, I, I'm excited not only to just have you fight in general, but it's even cooler that it's your birthday. Uh, if I had to walk into that Lozon gym one more time, and not <laughs> that, uh, I, we always I, say I, that I, we're like Mike. Mike tries to sneak in through the back, <laughs> and then like we're all just standing there, and he's just like, "God damn it!" <laughs> you know, it's like that's why I don't even train anymore. You guys have ruined it for me because I try to go to any gym, and it's like 
I get dirty looks. And it's just like, when am I going to fight? And I'm like, I can't even train. So now, so I'm blaming you guys that I'm 210 pounds now. Thanks, guys. No, nah, it's all love, Mike. We're just making sure you don't forget about us. That's all. I'll never, I'll never forget. Uh, shit, at one point in time, I, I even told Joe, I felt so bad. I'm like, I'd love Aaron to fight for us. I said, if we can find her, if I find her a fight anywhere, even if it's out of state, I'll pay to send her there. Because I felt so bad. Uh, but it's finally happened happening um february 5th so you have any sponsors a laundry list like valdina or anybody you want to thank um uh, and your social media so everybody can follow you uh social media obviously just aaron johnson on facebook uh war baby underscore mma on instagram if you're looking for i don't have one on right now but if you're looking for my t-shirts and hoodies i sell hoodies with my name on it it's they're wicked cool made by my sponsor uh much respect uh there's a link in my instagram and facebook bio just go right there and you can order one and i'll ship right to your house <coughs> damn what who do you use to um ship out your stuff uh my respect they are a <coughs> supplement company so they have their own website and everything and if you just go to that link it brings you right to their website you go to apparel you go to war baby fight kit and you can find all my stuff right there oh shit, that's pretty cool yeah. all right well um connor it's nice that you were able to join in um i know you got a big fight coming up in march uh for ces you know just cage titans love we're excited to finally see you because you kind of went through this past year having a nightmare of a year guys not showing up multiple guys not showing up so we're just excited to see you in any cage competing because we believe in you so uh we wish you the best as well on march I appreciate that. And uh, maybe if that, uh, depend on if Don, I'm rooting for Don Shannon for that 145 title. But if, uh, you know, if whatever happens, if Manly end up get, getting that title, I, I think I want I want that one because he said no to fighting me before. <laughs> and I think I deserve that title. So uh, I'm not going to fight Don for it because he's my boy, but I'll fight Man Shane Manley for it. Just to throw that out there. All right. All right. Well, hey, listen, yeah. I know you'll be there on February 5th. Um, and we don't want to jump ahead because your next fight's in March. But yeah. uh, we'll see what happens on February 5th because I know you'll have a close eye on that one. Um, and then, obviously, you'll be in the corner of your teammate. Yeah, uh, I got these two. I got Valdina and I got her. And they've been working super hard. And I'm excited, you know, for this fight. Now, it's kind of nice because if I had a fight on the same card with them, I wouldn't have been able to put the focus on them that night. And now, like, you know, the next four weeks, I can really focus in on them and making sure they're ready, get, ready for the fight. And uh, they're going to be putting on the shows. They've been working hard both of them so i'm really excited obviously connor I, I, I didn't even plan this question but obviously you have aspirations to make into the ufc but i hear about you know i hear Aaron talk about you as a trainer i hear valdina talk about you is this something and i know you work with the guys at lakeville migs and congdon and, and justin stevens back in the day um is this something that you see yourself down the line and doing some training a hundred percent. Like, I, I guess martial arts, like if, if the UFC wasn't a, uh, a goal, like I would still be doing martial arts every single day. This is what I love to do. You know, it's been my passion since I was a little kid and um, I'm actually starting to be opening up my own spot pretty soon. A couple of nights a week in Wareham, um, you know, just training, doing some kickboxing and starting small and see where it goes from there. But yeah, that's my goal is to stay in training and have my own gym one day. All right, cool. Well, it's great to see you guys both. Um, we will see you February 5th. Or maybe we'll see you before then. Um, and uh, good luck on February 5th, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah, good Appreciate luck it. On Thank you. you. See you guys soon. And good luck on March, in March as well, Connor. So thanks for coming on the Table Titans. Be well. All right. Well, there we go. Our first one. Yeah. Are you looking for a bathroom? No, I'm going to go to the back Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so basically, our first time getting people to call in. I think it was a pretty good success. What do you guys think? It was, it was a great success. It, it worked out great. I yeah. mean, Valdina. Yeah, Valdina I said it worked out very well in the end. You got a good connection. Yeah. I don't think there was any problems, really. No, not at all. So, huh. so I don't know if you can look it up while we're talking. Robert Roberto Villa said, Congratulations to Cage Titans on your wins at the seventh annual Fight Book MMA Awards. I wasn't aware that we we won an award. I wasn't aware of that. Maybe you can a fight book. It says we won an award, and he shared our podcast today. 
I'm clicking on his page right now. So we're learning now on the, on the fly. Let's see. I love the fact that you put the comments up. Yeah, the comments. I noticed that. I didn't. I only noticed it with one comment. I put up like five. If any, you know what? I noticed it. All right. Knockouts of the year. We didn't. Oh, fight book fighters of the year 2021. Billy Goff. They have Christian Perez from Combat Day Global, Kamaru Usman from the UFC, and Billy Goff as fighter of the fight book MMA's fighters of the year 2021. And let's see what else we got. If there's anything else. Uh, you want to say oh, fight book up. MMA's best local regional MMA promotions of the year 2021. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna send it to you. Wow, I didn't even know this. Pretty badass. Indeed. And we learn as we go. I just sent it to you. Let me see what else. So we won Fight Book MMA's Best Local Regional Promotion of the Year 2021. Fight World MMA located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Cage Titans located in Boston, Mass. And Extreme Fight Night located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow. Best choice for best regional cage announcer, Dave Hardy. We need to get Andy up in there. It's on. All right. We're going to have to go for Andy for 2022. Just so. Well, thank you so much for bringing thank that you. to our attention. Thanks, Roberto. Super cool. Fight book MMA. I can see that. Yeah, you can probably scroll on it. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's zoomed out, so I can zoom back into work. Very cool. Very cool. Valdina was only lagging because he's there's no Wi-Fi in his dad's boathouse. <laughs> uh, I wish we got a tour of that boathouse. That would, that would be probably pretty cool. But anyways, thank you guys so much. Cage Titans 51, Saturday, February 5th, Plymouth Memorial Hall. Creeping up. I mean, it's only a couple short weeks away now. We're well within a month now. Strike your distance. tickets. People have their tickets. They're on hand right now. Get your tickets off your fighters. We can't preach this enough. It's what gives yes. them the most bang for their buck. They sell tickets. They get a little cash on the side as well. And keep a lookout for the, the stream link for the Cage Titans 51 live stream. That will be coming out very shortly as well. So you can pre-order that because, yeah. you know, there's only so many tickets. These events always sell out. They're going to be sold out relatively soon. Mark my words. But, uh, but yeah, it's, but these these are two great fights we talked about. You know, you still have the main event with Giannetti and, and Bone. You still got the co-main event, um, Penafiel, you know, Lionel Young. So many people throughout New England are talking about that fight, excited about that fight. February 5th, make sure you get your tickets. Um, we'll be releasing the full fight card. I want to say... Should we hold it till next Monday, or I can probably announce it by the end of the week? We can hold it till next Monday. We'll hold it till just next do the Monday. whole. Hold it till next Monday. And then also, since we do have this capability, we're going to be fine tuning in and things like that. But if anybody wants to call in, we want to hear from anybody and everybody. We preach it. We are Cage Titans. This isn't just about Andy and I or talking to anybody or Brian. We want to hear from you guys. So if you want to call in, those, those, simply DM us. Those weeks where we just don't have a show, it's because it's like, ah, who wants to hear just us talk? It's yeah. like, and people are like, yeah, hey, how come you're not on there this week? I'm like, uh, it's it's I don't like the sound of my own voice sometimes. Yeah. I want to hear from you guys. There's only so much that I can say. <laughs> so uh, yeah. fighters, you know, like Phil Low Signo, I know that you've been super active on social media. You're fighting on this card. You may say to myself, I've only fought once. I'm an amateur. We still love to have you on the card. I mean, on the show, we can we can zoom you in. I call it zoom, but not really zoom. We, all we do is send you a link. You open it on your cell phone. And you go like this and you talk. Yep. Super simple, super easy. Uh, big time, um, big time. Thanks to Nick Heiler and Brian Garrison getting yeah. this up and running. This is a uh, this is great. Huge. And then yeah. you know Justin Simmons, you know Rob Pico, all these guys that are in the comments all the time. What, yeah, what better now? Look at that. I don't even know what it says. Oh, it's on our YouTube. I don't know. And hopefully, it says something good. I think that's a milestone. The first time you get a Russian comment. There we go. Could be, a, like could be a could be could be could be a Russian troll. I farm. love how those comments. Yeah, but um, those comments yeah. pop up are super cool. Yeah. So yeah, all you do is just DM us, and right. we'll send you the link, and you can call right in, and we put your face on the screen, and we'll be able to talk to you. We'll shoot the shit about matchups that you're looking forward to. You can give insights. Um, if you're just a fanboy and you want to talk about your favorite fighter, we'll have you on. Uh, whatever the case may be, this is a new 
uh, generation table titans where we really want to get interactive more than just us talking. Because you know what? We always love to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but we love to have you guys. Everybody except for Zach Zero. No Zach Zero. Yeah, Zach was actually here in person once for, for he did come Table Titans, person. and he just he just sat back. in the background. It didn't, didn't – it was his moment. It was his moment. His moment I would to love shine. to get Zach Searle on and then get him. But, um, <laughs> like, no. It would be great to have him call in as long as he promises to keep his freaking pants off. A couple way. wish lists. I'd love to see Penafial and Lionel call in. Uh, Joe sure. Gianetti's out training with Dan Cormier at AKA. I'd love to have him and Jacob Bone calling in. Uh, Jacob Bone uh, has a teammate making his pro debut, Hicksonbaum. I'd love to see him call in. Um, maybe get both of them. Uh, there's, there's so many great fighters on this card. Uh, Shane is training out at Glory. He's out there with, uh, I think, uh, yeah, Shane is, we can get him on. And uh, Kylie O'Hearn is out there, I, I just yeah. found out. She's down there training, so we get them on. Um, yeah, man, so there you have it. We're, we're going to tweak some of the backgrounds and things like that, but this is it. It's a new format. We'll be able to call you guys in and, and have you be a part of the show. Um, I think, is that a Signo comment? Zo Sig, that, I think no, no, that's his no, no. mom. Yeah, that's his mom, I believe. Yeah, that's that's his mom. I remember. So she actually – I don't think she came to the fights, and but she was messaging me on fight day like, I can't get the stream up. I'm like, the fights haven't started yet. It's like tonight or like whatever. It was like hours before. It might have even been like the day before. But I just remember I was like, yeah, because they haven't happened yet. And then she's like kept messaging me, and I'm like, uh, trying to help her out, and uh, I think I talked to him at the weigh-ins. It, it was his first fight. It was his, his first, first fight. Yeah, fight first experience. In the stream. You got to make sure you got it right. So, yep, so. understand it's a high-stress situation <laughs> when, you, when you might not catch the fight that you really want to catch. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we got a couple other big names to announce for you guys. We have some other announcements that I might be making later on this weekend. We'll get a uh, later on this week. I got something that I'm looking to sign up tomorrow. I'm not going to tip my hat more than that, but hopefully tomorrow. Um, I'll have another big announcement for everybody. Um, we know that Zach Desab has announced that he is fighting. We haven't announced his opponent, which will be coming down the pipe this week. Uh, matchup cards are going out. Fighters who are on this card, if you don't see a matchup card, that's because we don't have a picture on you. Email me a uh, picture of yourself. Fight pose, no shirt, um, with some good lighting, white background, black background, something, blank background. So we can actually get you guys your own fight posters. We want to do one on everybody. So if you haven't fought before, you need to take a picture and send it over to us. Don't screenshot a picture. Everybody nowadays has a nice high resolution camera, iPhones or whatever. Nice close up, you know, mid, mid chest up. It's all we need. And we'll get a nice fight banner for you guys to promote your fights. I got nothing else. Ah, that's about it. A couple weeks to fight night. You got to get your tickets off your fighters. And yeah, stay tuned for the live stream link to purchase it at home and for future viewing pleasures. And yeah, thanks for everybody tuning in tonight. Thank you for our guests for calling in Aaron Johnson, Andrew Valdina, Anna Crutchfield, and Arthur Pofu. It was a pleasure having you guys video chat in and hoping y'all at home enjoyed that and are looking forward to the fights on February 5th as much as we are over here. So, Phantomweight title on the line, amateur titles, some of these pro titles, just juicy as you can get. <laughs> I'm so stoked. We're starting off 2022 with a bang. All right. That's it. There so you cheers, go. Cheers, everybody. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Much appreciation. And what do you let's, have? let's do a quick thank you to Wicked Muay Thai for uh, having this commercial run on Table Titans, the first ever Table Titans commercial. So, yeah. You're rolling it again? Let's watch it. Oh, they let's love this. Let's close All it right. Out. Let me close uh, it out. Lucas Remsen's Wicked Muay Thai shorts commercial. <laughs> Thanks up, guys. Lucas, the prom kid now, here to promote the Wicked Muay Thai shorts because I do kick 23% harder in these shorts. What I'm gonna do is the regular old leg kick, right? So, boom. But that was weak. That was just a, that was just a show. The block, so. Yeah, um. Guys, get your Wicked Muay Thai shorts today and be sure to follow and watch Cage Titans on Instagram too because, you know, the, I fight for them, they're pretty cool, awesome.